Welcome. On this video, we will talk about a very specific type of a piecewise function, which we're going to label as a step function. So let's get started. So under example one, notice that here we have the first bish representation of what we call a step function. Well, why do we call that a step function? Well, notice that this resembles to this, the steps in a stair. So here, first step, second step, third, four, fifth, six, and seven steps. So these are just steps in a stair. And this is pretty much why they call it a step function. And the first thing that we want to do is, is it possible for us to properly represent the step function as a piecewise function? Well, let's call this function f of x. Now, to properly define the step function, what we want to do is take it one step at a time. So let's concentrate on this step right here. Let's just highlight it in yellow. Is it possible for me to just jot down a function that will describe this step? Well, the first thing that I notice that this is a horizontal line. And notice that this horizontal line has a value of negative 3. So therefore, perhaps I can come up with my first function being y equals negative 3. But now what is the limit or what are the restrictions on the domain? Well, notice that in this step function, I'm only using x values between negative 3 and negative 2, excluding negative 2. So therefore, I can say, well, I'm only using values from negative 3. Notice that at negative 3, we have a solid line. So therefore, it's a solid. And at negative 2, we have an open circle. So therefore, we don't write down an equal to. We just write it down here. So now notice that what we have here, this is a representation of my first step. But we, there's a lot of steps here. So perhaps we need to move on to the next step in our stair. So now let's take a look at the next step. Let's just do it in green. So under green, what is my y value? Well, my y value, it's at negative 2. So we have a function. Again, here, think about as if we were writing down the function y equals negative 3. And now in here, we're writing down the function y equals negative 2. But what are my limitations or what are the restrictions on the my domain? Well, I'm only using steps. I'm sorry, I'm only using x values from negative 2 to negative 1. So therefore, I need to write that down. I'm using a y value of negative 2 only when x is between negative 2 and negative 1, including negative 2, which is what we do have here. And you can get the hang of it, because now you can see that my next step, which is right here, I can have a function, which we can define as just being negative 1. But notice that my y is negative 1 when my x values are between negative 1 and 0. And again, notice that at negative 1, I'm using the inequality sign underneath the inequality because we do have a closed circle here. And at 0, I'm not using an inequality sign underneath the inequality because it's an open circle. And from here, we can just define the rest of the steps. So my next step, so we already have first, second, and third. So now my next step is going to be 0. And that's going to be from 0 to, oops, excluding this to positive one and so forth. We're not gonna write them all, but you can get the hang of it. So we have, and again, here we have, we're missing, uh, so we have four, one, two, three, four, we're missing one, two, and a third, third step right here. So this is how we can define the piecewise function of this step. So now let's try to analyze this. So the following questions are based on the graph on the left, which is the step function. Now, are there any points in the graph where the limit does not exist. Well, think about this. The limit only exists if we approach in the same value from the left and from the right. Let me just erase this. Notice that there are a lot of points where the limit does not exist. Let's take in consideration x equals negative 2. Because at x equals negative 2, if I'm approaching negative 2 from the left-hand side, I'm in this step, which if we're approaching negative 2 in this step, we seem to be approaching the y value of negative 3. 
And if I'm approaching still negative two, but now from the right hand side, I'm actually on the step above it. So from the left, I'm approaching the value of negative three. And from the right, I'm approaching the value of negative two. So notice that as we're getting closer to the X value of negative two, we're approaching different Y values. So this is one point where the limit does not exist. But notice that we have the same problem also at negative one. If we approach negative one from the left, we're hitting the value of negative two. If we're approaching negative one from the right, we're approaching the Y value of negative one. So notice that at X equals negative one, also the limit does not exist. The same can be said about zero, one, two, and three. Now, why is it that the limit does not exist on those values? It's because when we approach those values, I'm just going to say the left and right direction are different outputs. What I'm trying to say here is that if I approach it from the left, I get an output of negative three. If I'm approaching from the right, I get an output of negative two. Negative three is different than negative two. So therefore the outputs are different. So now, are there any points where the graph is not continuous? Well, notice that at those still same points, at negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three, the graph is not continuous because notice that here we have, again, this is what we call the jump discontinuity and all these values that we do have here. At all these values, we have a jump discontinuity because notice that here, if we just keep rolling on the graph itself. We got negative three, negative three, negative three, negative three, negative three. When we got here, boom, we jump very fast to the value of negative two. And then we are in negative two, and then you just jump to negative one. And then you're here, and then you jump. And recall that when we have that, we call it jump discontinuity. So are there any points where the graph is not continuous? Well, I'm just gonna say when X, I'm just gonna write it this, this way now zero at one at two and three and why is it well because we have what we call a jump discontinuity now can the graph represent a function so if we already know the graph of it if we already know the graph and we have a visual representation of the function recall that there's an easy way that we can use to see if we have a function. That's the vertical line test. So let's see, does this step function fail or pass the vertical line test? Well, choose any, any X value in our graph. So at least in this point, if we grab vertical line, notice that it's only touching it once, so it passes vertical line test. But now perhaps our point of interest is, are those still a specific values? Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. So let's see. If we draw a vertical line at negative two, you might be tempted to say, well, look, I'm hitting the graph here and here. So I'm touching the graph at two different values. So therefore it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but we gotta be careful with that statement. Because notice that here, this is a filled circle and this is an open circle. So in reality, we're only hitting the piecewise function at one point, which in this case, we're hitting it at the value of negative one. We're not hitting it at the value of negative two because that's an open circle. So it does pass the vertical line test. And notice that it doesn't matter where we graph a vertical line. Let's just choose another point. Let's choose the value of positive two. We're gonna encounter the same case. Here, we're touching the graph here we're not, that's remember, that's an open circle. So we're only touching the graph one. So notice that this graph passes the vertical line test. So therefore it is a function. 
And one way to say, or one way to explain is because it passes the vertical line test. And this is one way that we can analyze step functions. It's like whenever we have those steps or that jump, we're not going to have a limit at those points. But doesn't mean that the graph doesn't represent a function. So at those steps, the limit does not exist. We have this continuity, a jump discontinuity, but we still represent in a function. So now let's take a look at one more example real quick here just to give you a, a better understanding about this step function. And so it says the following is a special piecewise function, and we call it the sine function. And you're going to see why we call it a sine function in a second. The first thing we want to do is let's create a graph that represents the sine function, and then let's try to answer some questions. So how do we write this, or how do we visualize the sine function? Well, notice that is a piecewise function, where here we're saying that my first function is going to represent a function of y equals negative 1. Let me actually do this in a different color. Uh, let's choose green. So we have a line at negative 1. So that's about here. And again, let's just imagine that that's a straight line. So that's fine. So here we have the function y equals negative 1. But notice that we don't want the whole thing we have a domain restriction. And the remainder restriction is saying that this is only true for those values where x is less than 0. So therefore, all those values that are not less than 0, we have to erase them. So let's erase them, which in this case is going to be all those values to the right-hand side of 0. So now that we have erased those values, notice that at 0, there is no inequality underneath the there's no equality underneath the inequality. So therefore, at 0, we have an open circle. So there it is. That's an open circle. So that takes care of the first line. Now, the second line, which we're going to represent it in red, this is saying, I have a function who is defined as 0, but this is only happening when x is 0. So when x is 0, I have a very specific point, which is 0 which all this is saying is that we have a point at the origin. One way to visualize is we're saying, look, we have a line at y equals 0. But this line, it's only happening when x is 0. So therefore, you just have a coordinate point at 0, 0. And the last line in our piecewise function, the last line in our piecewise function, we're just going to do it in blue, it's saying we have a function at y equals 1. So let's just graph that. So we have a function of y equals 1. But we're only interested on those values where x is greater than 0. So here we have 0. We're only interested on those values that are greater than 0. So therefore, all those values less than 0, we have to erase them. So now that they're erased, notice that at 0, we don't have an equal underneath the inequality. So therefore, we have an open circle. So there's a virtual representation of what we call the sine function. And the reason why we call it a sine function is because notice that whenever we have a negative x value, your output, it's always negative 1. Whenever we have a positive x value, your output is positive 1. And whenever we have an x value of 0, your output is 0. So therefore, it just gives you the sign of the function. Positive, positive 1. Negative, negative 1. 0, it is 0. So let's try to answer these questions. Now, is the sine function continuous? And at this point, we have already seen jump discontinuity. And notice that we do have two jumps discontinuities here going on. Because notice that we have them pretty small here. Because if we keep reading these functions, here we have all negative y values, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. But then when we hit the x value of 0, it jumps automatically at 2. I'm sorry, at zero. So here we have a small jump discontinuity. And now if we keep reading the function from zero going forward, notice that we have another jump discontinuity here. So we have two small jumps discontinuities in some way. So therefore, my function, it is definitely not continuous.
because we have jump discontinuity. And now let's try to just analyze this sine function using some limit notation. So what happens to my sine function as x gets closer to negative infinity? So let's see. As x is getting closer to negative infinity, what's our y output? Well, as I keep moving farther and farther to the left hand side, notice that I'm still going to be on this green graph, which is defined as just being negative one. So if I keep moving all the way to the left, notice that I'm still going to be a negative one. So therefore, as I keep moving to the left hand side, I'm just going to be at the value of negative one. Now, what happens to the sine function when x equals zero, which is exactly right here? Well, if I'm approaching zero from the left, notice that I'm going to be have I'm getting closer and closer to the value of negative one. And if I approach zero from the right, I'm going to be having a y value of positive one. So notice that from the left, it is you're approaching negative one. And then from the right, as you're getting closer to zero, you're a positive one. They're not matching the same values. They're going to different y values. So therefore the limit, it does not exist. And what happens to this function as x gets closer to positive infinity? Or what happens as I keep moving to the right hand side of the function? Well, if I'm coming from the left, I'm right at negative one, and then at zero, and then a positive one. And if I keep moving to the right hand side, notice that I'm still gonna be in this function called y equals one. So therefore my y values are still gonna be one as I keep moving farther and farther to the right hand side. So therefore the limit is equivalent to positive one. And with this, it concludes our lesson for piecewise function with emphasis on step functions.